back again. Now I'm going to go through, there are four or five timelines that the Bible tracks based on the 490. And you're going to need to know them all in order to understand how John is doing his thing in uh, Revelation 17. And by the way, I'll fix that in a later video. I, I must have the wrong fonts on this computer. I'm doing this video on a different computer. So I'll fix that. That's an I that's missing. It won't look that way when you download the document. Okay, so in order for me to show you what John is doing with all these um, reconciliations to 490, I have to like go back and show you how the 490 works. The first 490 is measured from Adam's fall. It has nothing to do with the creation of the earth. The Bible doesn't tell you how old the earth is. But once you plot all the Bible dates, okay, you find out that Christ was scheduled to be born, and I'm going to go through why, 4106 years later. Now that wasn't the first schedule, all right? That was what ended up being the schedule as a result of Abraham. So you have, as it were, a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C for Christ's birth. And it's based on the 490s. All right? So let me just go through the basics of how the 490 works. You can also see it if you download this worksheet in, um, uh, let me unfreeze the panes. If you go to there, all right, you can just look in, in um, cell A2, or you can click the link here and download the doc that goes into much more detail if you want. Um, but the basic idea is that time didn't start until Adam fell, and that's in Genesis 3.22 number your days. Adam didn't have days numbered until he fell. All right, so that's why in Genesis 3, 3, 322 you have this cute min preposition, which is the preposition the Bible uses for birth. It's usually translated from the womb, which is dead wrong. It means from birth. The Greek preposition min means beyond, literally. Beyond, outside, out from. And you can find that in pretty much any lexicon you want. It's just that politically they mistranslated in the Bible in order to, to succumb to, you know, the apostate desire to say that the abortion is murder. But they don't always translate it that way, so that's how you can tell it's politically motivated. I cover that in my pro-life blasphemy series. The point you need to know is that Adam is deemed to be born in sin as of the date he sinned, we do not know how actually how old he was then, but time starts to be counted then. So we say year, I'm saying year of the world, if you got a better name, use it, but I don't want to use the other names that people currently use. Year of the world or, year, or FAF from Adam's fall. I use both of those expressions. So 490 years after Adam fell is the first benchmark. The rule is, and you're, you're going to have to go through all the other videos to see why this is true, but the rule is somebody's got to super mature by that 490 or the world ends. This is the precedence for the rapture doctrine. And nobody seems to know it. The Jews used to know, obviously, because the Bible is metered like this, based on this. And there are lots of verses that talk about it, specifically the begats. That's what they're there for. So he was 130 years after his fall, he super matured and had Seth. In other words, he had other kids. But this is the mark of his super maturation. Seth himself super matured when he was age 105. And so he had Enosh. And then Enosh supermatured when he was 90, and he had Kenan. And then Kenan supermatured when he was 70. You notice that the time's getting shorter. And he had Mahalel. Okay? And that basically ends your 490. 
So each one of these guys super mature, but time is alone. Adam didn't mature, super mature the very first year. So his date supersedes all of these. All right. He also lived longer than, 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 you know, well, he didn't live longer than all of them. But his supermaturation continued. All right. And their dates might have made the time better, but it didn't make it longer. And how do we know that? Because here's Jared 492 years later, the 492nd year later. Okay, so again, because of the beginning of the year versus ending of the year, you got a rounding that looks like it's plus two. He has Enoch. So Jared supermatured in age 162. Now, was he a late birthday? Because if he was a late birthday, that would account for it. Like if, if God is accounting from the beginning, of Adam's fall, which would be considered the beginning of the year, which the year in those days began at fall, ha ha, autumnal equinox, then if Jared is maturing at the end of his birthday, at his birthday, or he's maturing at the end of a year versus the beginning here, then you can see where the plus two is coming from. Okay? So, but notice that's historical. You got 130, and then there's the total 490, which includes the four, the four, the 130 in here. Okay. Then there's a 70-year voting window, and that will become important when we talk about Noah and uh, Moses. That's a 70-year voting window. It's a mass voting window. It's the origin of the sabbatical year in the Mosaic Law. There's a mathematical relationship there between uh, the 70 and the 50 years for the Goyim. They, they, have 50, they have their own voting period of 50 years after 1,000, which I'll cover. But just, you know, pretend that this is true until you vetted it. Because i got to just show you what the structure is. So you got 490, 70, 560. That's history. That's the historical pattern. And then you got another 490, okay? And that takes you to 1050. 490 plus 70. Oh, can I make this better than that? Let's do it 150. There, now you can see more. Not, not enough. 490 plus 70 plus 490. See, because it's 560 plus 490 is 1050. And it's 1050 because it's 490 plus 70 plus 490. That 490, that second 490, buys the extra 50 years for the, when I say Goyam, I mean the unbeliever to vote. Big gospel, you know, big... In, um, intensification of the gospel going out occurs during the last 50 years of the 1050. Now you'll notice in between is a thousand. Before I explain the thousand, notice the next thing. Here's 490 and then look 490 years after it is 980. See because the rule was, this is the crux of this, this story, the rule was that there's 490 years allotted at the beginning, at Adam's fall, to grow, to spiritually mature enough to be considered supermaturation, kingly maturation. Give it the name you want. I call it super mature, which means super mature and knowing God. All right? Somebody's got to do it by then or time ends. Not only that, but now we got a second 490 beginning after this one completes. So by 980, someone who super matured in the first 490 makes it okay to have a second one. But by before that second one ends, before 980, a second person has to super mature. The same thing is true for the next one. The next one is going to be 1470. And then the next one is going to be 1540. Um, no, it's 1470. And then the next one is going to be 1960. 
So what you should understand out of this is every, every 490 years, someone has to supermature or time ends. No matter what the voting is here in the 70, no matter what the voting is here in the, in the 50, every 490. And the Bible actually tracks that. That's how I learned about it, is by noticing the, the relationships and the numbers. I mean, that's how physics works. It's all math. And then they try to test the math conclusions they got. Well, that's what we're doing here. We're testing it with actual history. And it, the test shows up much more clearly um, in Bible and in post-cross once you know what to look for. So we got 490, 980. So a second person. And we know from the Genesis 5 who they were. See, like he's born between... He's he's sires between six you know five sixty and nine eighty so Jared did it well he wasn't the only one Enoch was the was so good that God just took him he didn't even die okay and Methuselah therefore must have gotten it twice because the flood doesn't occur until here okay and you say well but Noah got it yeah Noah did get it he got it in fifteen fifty six but there wouldn't have been a Noah. If Methuselah didn't get it, because look when his son is born, 874. Well, between 874 and 1556 is more than 490 years. You see the point? So Methuselah had to get two 490-year time grants. So just understand, the first thing you need to know is it's 490, 490. It's without regard to the other timelines. 490, 490, well, that's 980 is the second one. 1470 is the third one. And then 1960 would be the fourth one. And that keeps on going. All right, that's the first rule of time, every 490 years. Now, there's a reset with Christ, but I'm, I'm not going to go through that yet. But it's still the same rule. The, the number of 490s that have to occur are reset at Christ's birth and reset at Christ's death. All right, which is what John is actually accounting. See, we have to go down here. I guess I have to talk about it now. Because Christ is God man and he's paying on the cross, on the one hand, you can't credit the 490s. And I'll explain why he's born in 4103 rather than 4106 in a later, later increment. Because he's God-man, and at the same time because um, he's paying for sins, there's got to be some kind of credit for him successfully paying for sins. And what my pastor and many other pastors speculated who are dispensationalists, and they said, you know what? When he was born, a new dispensation began. And yeah, it did. Paul measures time from Christ's birth as a new dispensation in Ephesians 1. So does John, measuring it right here. Okay, so John is, is harking you back to Ephesians 1, 3, which is doing the same thing. All of the meter in, in Ephesians 1 is based on uh, Christ being the start of a new 490, all right, at his birth. Okay, at the same time, you have to say that there's a new 490 at his death because that's the beginning of the church age. And everybody knows the church age began on Pentecost 30 AD, yada, yada. Okay, and that is also confirmed right here by John in Revelation. So he's, he's on two accounting tracks for the consecutive 490. It's a consecutive 490. Consecutive. Every 490 years, somebody's got to super mature. But consecutive from what point? Well, that point gets reset at Christ's birth, and there's another tracking at his death. All right, which makes the 30 years in between, even though he's 33, that's a whole other story to explain. I've done it before. It has to do with an ancient Roman guy named Varro. This is why we have to say 4 BC for Christ's birth. But that interim 30 years, and you can say it's really 33 years, is like a very intense period of history. And if you go through history, all right, 
which I started to do. All right, here we're at 490 years. Where is it? I was going, you know, from the 3 BC thing. Say 490 years from Christ's birth. All right, that's the end of it. Well, what happened? Well, what happened was just massive evangelism. Massive migrations, massive flurry of Bibles being copied, okay? Massive persecution by Christians of Christians. All the things that have happened in the other 490s of the past, except now it's Christian on Christian, particularly Constantine, which is what I've been covering for a while now, all right? And that didn't just, that didn't just stop there. Now we go to 980. Sorry I'm covering so much ground, but I need you to see the pattern of the numbers. Now we go to 980, which is right here. This is from his birth now. We're just using birth, not death. Okay? That was even more of the same. Wider, wider geographical area. Okay? And I mean, you know, you can fill in your own dates. This worksheet is editable. You can fill in your own dates about what the history was. I was trying to compute it in a hurry so I could just see what the overall trends were. But you can bear this out in history. All right. Now, that's the topic that John, in particular, is focusing on. He's saying, hi, I'm plotting out the end of the first 490. And it ends with a desire to revive the Roman Empire under Constantine. That is explicitly what Justinian set out to do. If you read the Bury history book that I linked at the end of uh, episode 8F, I gave you a link to Bury's history of... Um, Justin and Justinian, because Burry's considered one of the most premier Roman historians. Okay, well, he quotes Justinian saying he wants to revive Constantine's empire. Quotes him. All right, and of course, you know, they know how to read the Latin and the Greek. That's why they're Roman historians, okay? Justinian aimed to do that, and yet 438 years before Justinian even came to power, John is telling you what he's going to do. And he's telling you with really biting wit. They're busy paying attention to the beast because, Hoti, it was. Which means they want to go back. And it's not now, which is what we're going to cover. It wasn't under, Justinian didn't, in those years, he hadn't yet conquered anything. He was trying to get everything ready to conquer. He was busy still fighting the Persians. Okay. And then, and will come. Yeah, the and will come. That's what he was trying to make it happen. All right, but he still hadn't made it happen by 534. It wasn't until about in here that he started to get what he wanted. Okay? And that's why this language is going to become very biting, and it will have to be in future episodes. You see where I'm going with this? Paul, um, John is tracing out a historical trend at the end of a 490 that is going to renew. Renew. Because time grant renews. And before it renews, since Satan doesn't want time to continue, then there's all this fighting that goes on. And it's among Christians. Among Christians. Okay? So here we go. You can call that 980 if you want. Second contiguous 490 from his birth. I'm using the, you know, the N3 BC birthday. Okay, N4 BC rather. Birthday. Okay, but the other thing is that you can go and this is the Bible does this also. You can go from Christ's death. Everybody says, you know, Pentecost. Well, yeah. Okay, so then I also plotted it from Christ's death. What would be, that would end up being 520, because 30 plus 490 is 520. So 520, that's the far 490 from his death. Now, now with 520 then, you're adding 490 to that, 
And do I have my calculator here somewhere? There it is. Yay. Here's my calculator. Okay, so 520 plus 490 means the next consecutive 490 is 1010. And that was the rise of the Clooney's, and it was a very, a very big, important time, too. And it also gave rise to the Crusades. This is when talk of the Crusades was really starting to heat up. All right? And then after 1010 would be 1500. You know what that was. That was the Reformation. You're beginning to notice it's got all the same characteristics. All right? The same characteristics. See, there's 1500. It's contiguous. The 490s are contiguous. That's the important thing about this timeline. Contiguous 490s. And they were contiguous from Adam's fall until Christ came. And now they're contiguous from either his death or his birth. And it looks like that 30-year window is like the most concentrated time. In other words, if somebody super matures, not quite at the 490 from his birth, but before the 490 of his death, it counts and time gets to continue. So this would be 1990 next, and that's our time right here. And there's always something massive historical that occurs related to Bible, okay, related to Bible arguments and Bible study and a lot of migration and a lot of historical fighting. But it's really the same trend that goes on from here, from Adam's fall. I'll cover more about that in the next segment.